Right, so we're going to talk about inverse matrices, and um, this is going to be a little bit of a lecture, so it's going to be a little bit longer. We're going to do some proof work in it, and um, a lot of that is because inverse matrices are absolutely key to doing linear algebra. They are uh, a huge part of linear algebra, and they are one of the, the foundational pieces to understanding a lot, of, uh, a lot of linear algebra. Now, not every matrix is going to end up being invertible or having an inverse, and so consequently, you know, you want to kind of keep that in mind as we work. We've seen a bunch of them that are not, um, but there are going to be quite a few that are, and the ones that are are hugely important. They're very valuable. They're very tidy and clean um, for a lot of really good reasons. Okay, so let's actually first start out with defining the inverse. Okay, or actually defining something as being invertible. So a matrix A. is invertible if there exists a matrix B such that A B equals B A equals I. Okay. All right. We should also state um, A Right. Okay. So such that is the case, and so I being the being the identity matrix. All right. So it's the identity matrix. Which is right one zero zero dot 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 bunch of zeros then one on the diagonal. So it's all ones on the diagonal. Okay, and zeros. All right. Now, let's say some things about this, about uh, the invertible matrix. So suppose I was n by n. Okay, I was n by n, and so that means that it has n rows and n columns. Just as a reminder. And so what we want to do is we want to know, does that actually restrict what A is going to look like? And the answer is yes. Okay. The first thing that we need to know is, is that A is going to be, we'll say M uh, is going to be N by M, right? And we know that because I is N by N. So the resulting of AB, right? AB equals I is going to give me an N by M matrix. But... A is also, excuse me, A, big A, is also M, uh, let's say, it's going to call it B by N, right? Just choose B as any other number, but it's also going to be, that N is the same N. Those Ns are the same, and the reason why is because of this one, right? We're going to take B times A, all right? So um, what we get here is, is we get, all right, B times A will give us N by N. And so consequently, the number of columns in A has to be N. And then because AB equals I, right, then that actually also gives us that A must be uh, have N rows. So A is N by N, right? That's good. B must also be N by N then. And that's because... of the same logic as A, really. So we're gonna get an N by N matrix as the result of left multiplying by B and right multiplying by B. So consequently, we're gonna get, it's gotta be N by N, all right? You're gonna to have to think about that, it'll convince yourself in that case, okay? So that's kind of cool. So what we can do is we can actually strengthen the statement that we had before. A, an N by N matrix, A is invertible if there exists an N by N matrix B such that A B equals B A equals I N. So N I is also going to be N by N. Right? 
So what we get is, is that A has to be square, B has to be square, I has to be square. Okay, that's how that works. So let's take a look at an example of a matrix that satisfies this. Okay. So we'll take A, we'll let A equal, all right, one, negative one, two, two, negative three, three, one, negative one, one. And B is going to equal zero, negative one, three, one, negative one, 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 zero, one. So AB is going to equal one, two, one, negative one, negative three, negative one, two times. 0, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. That's going to equal 1 times 0, 0, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus 2, that's 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, so those two to put together are 0 plus 0, that's 0. 1 times 3, right, is 3 minus 1 plus 2, okay, is now going to be 0. 2 times 0 is 0, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3, okay, that gives me 0. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1, and uh, 3 times 0 is 0. 2 times uh, 3 is 6, minus three, uh, missing something here. Oh, that's a negative one, excuse me. This one here should be a negative one. Two times three is six, negative three times one is negative three, so that's positive three, then minus three is zero. One times zero is zero, negative one times negative one, uh, times one is one, one times one is one, so that's zero when we add them all together. One times negative one, is negative one, one, zero, so that's zero, and then negative three plus one, or excuse me, negative, uh, excuse me, three minus one minus one is gonna give me one. So consequently, when I take a b, that's gonna uh, a times b is gonna equal the identity. B times a, when we go the other direction, that's gonna equal, it's gonna be zero, negative one, three, 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, times 1, negative 1, 2, 2, negative 3, 3, 1, negative 1, 1. And when you, I'll leave it up to the, uh, the reader, right? So that's proof left to reader, right? Or to the observer, and it's going to end up giving me the identity. So that's not, that shouldn't take you too long if you want to actually prove that that's the case. So... B equals A inverse, okay? And, ironically, A inverse equals B. Look at that. Maybe it's not ironic. Maybe that's just not the right term, okay? So what we see is, is that we can utilize that definition to give us, you know, this identity matrix right here, okay? It's actually kind of cool. Now, next we've got a little theorem, and this theorem actually has to do with stating that the identity matrix is unique. The identity, uh, excuse me, the inverse is unique, All right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna suppose that there are two matrices that actually are the inverses of A. So suppose, right, okay, that, why don't we write out the proof of this real quick? We'll do it math ways. So, okay. Um, We'll say let A be an n by n matrix. All right. And suppose B and C are both n by n. Then if a, B equals B, A equals I, N, and 
AC equals CA equals IN, then B equals C. Okay, then B equals C. Well, <clears throat> so we know, okay, that if it is the case, right, if what we have right here is the case, then we know that C is going to equal C times the identity. All right, that makes sense because the identity actually, when we multiply by it, it's going to give us back the number, and that's going to equal C times AB. All right, and this is then going to give us C is equal to C A B, which equals I N, which equals B, or IB, excuse me, which just simply equals B. Right, so basically, what they did right, what we did right here is you said, okay, well, we got C. And you're going to say that C is equal to the identity, but AB is also equal to the identity. So consequently, C, which equals CAB. Oh wait, but CA is also the identity, right? Cool. So that means that we have the identity times B, which is just then equal to B. So C equals B. The upshot of this, why this is so important, is this means. The inverse, the inverse of A is unique. There's only one of them. So consequently, you don't have to go out looking for more of them. You can just say, once you find the one of them, you're like, that's the only one that's ever gonna do it. And that's actually gonna come into play a little bit later on when we start talking about and doing some more proof work. All right, so what makes this so powerful? Why is it so important? Why are invertible matrices so important? All right, well, here's one of our first really big theorems of the course. Okay, if A is invertible, then the n by n system of linear equations AX equals B will always have a unique solution for all B. That solution is X equals A inverse. All right, let's think about this, all right? So let's suppose, suppose AX equals B, okay? Since A inverse exists, A inverse AX will equal A inverse B a inverse a x equals i n x, which equals a inverse b, and so x will just equal a inverse b. Since, from above, since a inverse is unique, And matrix multiplication is well defined, is what we say. X equals A inverse B is unique as well. Basically, that's just stating that we're, there's no way to get another value for x, right? If you're multiplying some matrix A inverse, and that's the only A inverse that there exists, and B was already defined beforehand, so consequently, we're never going to get a different x, okay? So that's kind of cool. We have one solution, and that one solution, x equals A inverse B, is in fact a unique solution, okay? So this tells us, like, this is huge. 
So if I know that A is invertible, then I know that for every value of B, I'm going to get a unique solution. So like this is already given. I don't have to do anything with it. I know A is invertible. Done. I'm finished. Right? Okay. I mean, like I got to go out and figure out what a B is, but that's not so hard. All right. In fact, we're going to do that in just a second. We're actually going to go, like go solve a system utilizing the inverse. Right? It won't take us very long at all. So, um, but you have to get that this, just knowing that there is a unique solution for every single B, right, makes life a lot easier. Like, say, for example, you're working on a, you know, you're, you're working on a program, you've got a big, big array that you're working with, and you want to know whether or not you're actually going to get a solution utilizing this array, rather than like an infinite number of solutions, which might as well be meaningless, or only tells you a certain amount of information, but single solutions, right, for particular values is hugely va valuable. It's very, very beneficial. So consequently, you're like, okay, cool. Hey, look, A, my coefficient matrix is going to give me a unique solution for all of my values of B. That is excellent. That's really, really great. Okay. Let's try this out. Let's actually see um, how this works and how handy something like this is because we're going to use it quite a lot. You're going to use this uh, fact in order to solve systems. So let's take a look at an example. Suppose that we wanted to solve, we knew that uh, we're going to let b equal 1, 0, negative 1. Okay? And we wanted to solve ax equals b. All right? So given what we just learned from that last theorem, x, our solution, is going to end up equaling, well, Remember, A inverse was equal to B, so it'll equal 0, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, times 1, 0, negative 1. And so this will then equal, this is 0, 0, 3, uh, 0, 0, negative 3. Okay. Then um, 1, 0, 0. And then 1, 0, 2. So it'll be 3, 0, 2. Okay? So we're saying that that solution is going to be 3, 0, 2. Now let's check that out. Let's make sure that that's the case. So how we'll do that is we're going to take A, 1, 2, 1, negative 1, negative 3, negative 1, 2, 3, 1. We're going to multiply that by negative 3, 0, 2. And that should equal, okay, so we've got negative 3 plus 0 plus 4, that's 1. Negative 6 plus 0 plus 6, that's 0. Then negative 3 plus 0 plus 2, that's negative 1. And so consequently, we see that negative 3, 0, 2 is in fact the solution to our system. Ta-da! Yay! Hashtag. It's done, okay? So that's super handy. Like basically what you get is, is that change your B around, all you need to do is to solve the system AX equals B is to multiply B by A inverse if A inverse in fact exists. Now, here's the deal. And I'm going to put this in here as a warning. If A inverse does not exist, then X equal to A inverse B, all right, is not defined. There's no A inverse there. It doesn't mean that X doesn't exist. X does exist. It just means you cannot find X that way, okay, right? Can't find X this way. So before we actually utilize this method, what we have to do is we have to make sure that A inverse in fact exists. All right, so now we have another theorem that's actually going to become, that's really actually very powerful. And this is the proof of the existence of an inverse. Okay? And it basically states this. Okay? It says, if the rank of A equals N, right, for an N by N matrix A, then A 
is invertible and a inverse exists. Okay. All right, so this is really powerful. If we have an n by n matrix, right? If a is square, right? And rank of a equals the number of columns and rows in a, then a inverse exists. Okay, that's cool. That's really, really nice. Now, how do we know this? So some proof work, right? If the rank of A equals N, all right, so now we've got a really powerful proof, okay? We've got a theorem. The rank, the, uh, the matrix, the N by N matrix A is invertible if and only if the rank of A equals N. So basically, if there are no non-zero rows, okay, in the row reduction of A. So if the rank of A is equal to N, then uh, the N by N matrix A is invertible. So let's start out. Now notice if and only if, what that means inside of math parlance is that means that if we know that the rank of A equals N, right, then that we know that the matrix A is invertible. Okay. If on the other hand, we know that the matrix A is invertible, then we know that the rank of A is equal to N, right? They're equivalent. They're what's called equivalent statements. So in order to kind of prove them to be true, I'm going to have to prove them both ways. All right. So let's start out with uh, the N by N matrix A is invertible if and only if the rank of A equals N. So we'll start out with suppose the rank of A equals N, uh, excuse me, the matrix A is invertible. Then, and we just proved this, there is a unique solution to AX equals B for all B. Okay. Thus, the rank of A is equal to N. We talked about that in uh, section 2.5. Cool. So that's the first way. That's actually showing that if A is invertible, the rank of A equals N. Now notice this is an if and only if statement. So consequently, it's going to be what we call equivalent. And so what we have to do is we have to prove that if the rank of A equals N, we end up with an invertible matrix, which is actually going to be even more powerful for us in many ways, because what it's going to do is it's going to actually say, oh, if I know that the rank of A is equal to N, then I know that I have an invertible matrix, which is like, you'll see, it's like the end game. It's like, you're done. I'm finished. Okay. So what we're going to say is we're going to say, okay, well, first suppose that the rank of A equals N. Suppose that the rank of A equals N. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to show, we want to show AX equals I, okay, equals XA. So basically that there exists an X, right? Some X exists that will allow us to do that. That's what it means to be invertible. So we need to show that this, this one actually exists, all right? Um, since the rank of A equals N, there is a unique solution to a x equals b for all b. So let's just imagine, all right, we'll take for example, let's imagine that a is, so here's like, we'll create a little note so you can see what I'm talking about. Imagine a is three by three. All right, okay. Well, we know that we can get, we know, because the rank of A is three, 
we can get a right times x will equal one zero zero a times x x1 call it and x2 will equal zero one zero a times x3 will equal zero zero one okay so we know that we we can actually do that um, because we know that we're going to get a unique solution for each and every one of them all right and these guys here we have special names for them this one is going to be called e1 this one we call e2 this one here is e3 and if we have an n by n matrix uh or we have yeah we have an n by n system what we'll have is we'll have e1 through en where we have a one in one of the rows and zeros everywhere else okay um they're called standard basis vectors they're very very powerful very special all right we haven't got quite gotten there yet but we'll get to there eventually so what we want to imagine is um so like here's our example so a we can construct right we construct this matrix ax right okay a we'll take it and we're going to multiply it by x1 x2 x3 okay and what that'll give us right you can kind of try this out for yourself if you ever want to try it that'll give us back one zero 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 one zero 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 one oh that's kind of handy right that means that the x we have we do have an x ax that will give us back right the identity matrix so it's very very cool okay and if we gen what if we generalize okay by the way these are those vectors they're unknown we don't know know them we'll take a okay and that's x1 x2 all the way up through xn we'll end up equaling the identity matrix in n by n okay so if you just imagine just in general if a is n by n we can just find these vectors right that will then give us back the standard basis vectors for an entire matrix all right so that's like kind of big picture thing so it's really nice that x is the thing that does that right so x will end up equaling this matrix all right well now we need to show we need to show x a will now equal i n okay so what, what i'm going to do is i'm going to post multiply okay i'm going to multiply a times a x a x a okay and we know that that's going to end up equaling a that's because this is i remember that that's what we just proved that that's actually going to give me the, back the identity so now i've got a x a minus a will equal zero or the zero vector Okay, or zero matrix, excuse me, zero matrix. Okay, and then what I can do is I could take out, and this is going to give me XA minus IN equals zero. So basically, what I've done is I factored out the matrix, I factored out uh, the matrix A, and now what I'm left with is XA minus I equals zero. Okay, well, A does not equal the zero matrix. All right, so XA minus IN, right, okay, will end up equaling zero. The reason why this is true is because we know because the rank of a equals n that ax equals zero has only the trivial solution so if i had a times some matrix call this matrix y okay and that equals zero the only possibility that I have is that y which is equal to y1 y2 all the way up to yn 
is simply equal to a bunch of, we'll call it zero vectors. Okay, you just want to imagine they're all a bunch of zero vectors all the way down. Okay, and this is because the only possible way, much like the, the only possible way for us to get back the those standard basis vectors, the only possible way for a times a vector to equal zero is for that vector to be zero because the rank of a equals n, right? It's kind of done there. So y equals zero. This means that xa minus in is going to equal zero. So that means that xa equals in. So xa equals ax equals zero. And there we are. Hence, a is invertible. Rockin', that's great. It's really cool. So what we know here is, right, our end result, and this is very important, if the rank of a equals n, then a is invertible, and if a is invertible, the rank of a is n. Okay, so if the rank of a is equal to n, then a is invertible, and if a is invertible, then the rank of a is equal to n. Woo, cool, right? And so what makes this thing actually really so cool is because we've got this next little theorem, not a little theorem at all, actually. It now states if a is an n by n matrix, and ax equals b has a unique solution for all b, then a is invertible. Woof, that's awesome. Okay, let's talk a little bit about why this is, so this is kind of handy, this is powerful. So we already know, our little proof here, it's pretty quick, if ax equals b has a unique solution for all b, then the rank of a equals n. If the rank of a equals n, we just proved a is invertible. So, we just got, we got a bunch of really big results. Right? These are like huge results, okay? One, if A is invertible, this square, the following are equivalent. We actually have actually now proven that these following terms are equivalent. AX equals B has a unique solution for all B. A is invertible. And the rank of A is equal to N. n by n. Cool. So what that means is that if I know one of them, I know all of them. If one of them is true, they're all true. Okay. And in proof, that's actually really, really important. That's a very powerful thing because what it's going to basically do is it's going to allow us to go, okay, so I know this one. And what ends up happening is, is that then the rank of a is equal to n and you're like, oh, the rank of a is equal to n. Invertibility. It's invertible. And that means that I have a unique solution for all of my ax equals b and I'm done. I'm like, fabulous, that's awesome, I want that.
okay? So this idea of equivalence is super powerful. And these are the first three statements of the invertible matrix theorem. I'm going to add another one, by the way. All right. So here's the next one. The next one has to do with those homogeneous systems. All right. All right. So if A is invertible, then AX equals zero has only the trivial solution. Now remember the trivial solution is the zero, the zero vector, okay? So we'll just show this, suppose A is invertible. Then by what we just stated above, AX equals B has a unique solution x equals, excuse me, x equals zero has a unique solution. Thus, okay, x equals a inverse times zero, which means, which implies that x must equal zero. So, the only solution to AX equals zero is the zero vector. Cool. Next up, suppose we want to state now if the only solution to AX equals zero is the trivial solution then A is invertible. Well, suppose, right, here's our proof, suppose um, the trivial solution is the only solution to AX equals zero. And the only meaning, it's the unique solution to AX equals zero. This means that there is a unique solution to AX equals B for some B or for some B, right, equaling to the zero vector, and so A is invertible. So there's a new equivalence for us, all right? So basically what this is saying. So we're gonna say, suppose that we have the trivial solution is the only solution to AX equals B. Now that means that there's a unique solution to AX equals B, because we've got it. It's the trivial solution to AX equals zero, right? Okay, and so that means by our previous statement that A has to be invertible, done. What this means is that A, uh, an N by N, so square matrix A, is invertible if and only if, so again, we have another equivalency statement, if a, the only solution to AX equals zero is the trivial solution. Another super powerful result, okay? So we've now gotten like a bunch of really powerful results from knowing that whether or not a matrix is invertible or not, okay? So basically, if I know that a matrix is invertible, then the only solution to AX equals zero is the zero vector, okay? And conversely, if the only solution to AX equals zero is the zero vector, that tells me that A is invertible. Now here's the converse. If A is not invertible, then the, that means that there is another solution right okay 
to ax equals zero. In fact, it means that you have an infinite number of solutions to ax equals zero. If you know that a is not invertible, right, because these are equivalent statements, you know that ax equals b does not have unique solutions for all b. Okay, it might have them for some, but it might not have them at all. Okay, if you know that a is invertible, you know that the rank of a is also equal to n. If a is not invertible, the rank of a is not equal to n. If the rank of a is not equal to n, then a is not invertible. These are equivalent statements, right? Okay, so they can actually tell you something, right? They tell you something about everything else too. If you don't have one of these statements, you don't have any of them. You have the exact opposites. You in fact have the, the what we call the negations of them, right? So like, for example, like I said, if a is not invertible, then ax equals b does not have a solution for all b, okay? This, this ends up becoming huge. We're gonna talk a lot more about this when we talk about it in chapter four because of how important this idea of equivalence is. Okay, so you wanna catch how important that idea is and how much it shows up, right, when we're talking about inverse matrices. Now I'm gonna give you a very special note on this. It's a very special note, okay, All right? Um, my very special note is this. Not all matrices are invertible, okay? Note, not all matrices are invertible. And if a matrix is not square, it can never be invertible. Remember we talked about that at the very beginning. The matrix must be square to be invertible. If we're looking at something that is not square, it's not invertible. And not all, and we should even say not all even square matrices are invertible. Some of them are not. So you have to check for invertibility first, right? You have to check to see whether or not you have something that's invertible first. Okay, so that kind of completes this lecture. The Gauss-Jordan um, technique, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a bit more about properties of inverse matrices in a, a later video. Um, and also I will post a, um, a video on the Gauss-Jordan technique for finding inverse matrices by hand. All right, okay, this completes the lecture.